Fernando, good to see you. I think uh, we saw you down at Titanic set many, many years ago. That's right. That's right. Thank you for remembering. And I parked in your parking spot right now. No problem. I left it open for you. Thank you so much. You know what? Again, no one had an idea that it was going to make this kind of money and be this successful and be that great again. How come after you make something so great and then it's like you guys are a famous band. Here you go again making another hit. How's that feel and how does it come to be that you guys can always produce such great content, great stuff? You know, I think people look at, you know, and are, people are surprised by the success of Avatar Way of Water. I'm surprised by because Jim Cameron starts with a script that he believes in a script that puts characters up on the screen that people will want to go on a journey with them. And Pandora is a world of wonder that people want to escape to. Uh, so we had the script, and then it was a question of surrounding ourselves with people who didn't want to rest on the laurels of their past, but wanted to push their art form, their craft, whether it be in design or visual effects or acting, to the next level. I was speaking to you earlier, and now I ask you, what is your, on production, what is your favorite day? So what is your, your, for the beginning of production, what are your favorite days on your beginning of production? You know, my favorite day on the beginning of, of production is the first time Jim calls action. And I view it as a call to action. It's a call to action, uh, not just for what we're doing on the set in that moment, but it's a call to action for the story we are telling, and that hopefully our story will be a call to action for people when they've left the theater or left their homes after seeing the movie to make a difference in the world in which we live. I want to ask you this question again. Maybe you can answer it just, and this is like Miss Universe. I want you to ask, answer it differently. Your imaging processing software or the way that you guys capture, what makes it so different, immersive, and cool? So I think that what makes our process so interesting is that we focus on the face. We are much more concerned about the nuances of a facial performance than we are about a body performance. So we have the actors wear two high definition head rigs. And when we go downstream and we challenge Weta FX to realize that performance on the screen, we've shot reference cameras of what the actors really did. And that reference footage stays with that shot all the way through the process. So when Jim and I or Richie are looking at what Wet is bringing us back, we can see what Zoe did, what Sigourney did, what Sam did, what Kate Winslet did, and make sure that that's what we are doing. What happens on your first screening when you guys are all together on the first run, first pass? What is that, what is that feeling like when you're actually sitting down and saying, let's see what this really looks like? You know, what it's like when we first watch a movie, we do it when it's in an unfinished form. We do it when it's still in a very, very rough form from a visual standpoint. And the first thing we focus on is, is the story there? Is it emotional? And once we've realized that, we then challenge ourselves, how do we make it even more emotional? And then the fear sets in and goes, okay, how do we complete this in time? Right, right. How come the world, myself, everybody, uh, my journalists, my friends, my family, love Avatar so much? What is it about it that, like, it's... And we were waiting for it for so long, too. It was a long wait. You know, I can't tell you why people do it. I can tell you why I think people respond to it. I think people respond to it because they see characters that are not perfect, characters that are relatable. They have their faults. Characters that do not have superhuman abilities. Yet, they rise up and they make a difference. They rise up and they care for each other. They rise up and they fall in love. I think these are all things that are aspirational for an audience. And that's one of the reasons they take to the film. You know, today was a real treat as a junket after COVID. Uh, the explanation of all the different character, avatar characters and the that's endoskeleton or you know the robots and everything really seeing the detail and the size and and, the, and your you know your guy was telling us about this is the actual size what they're supposed to be giving you an actual reference because you kind of don't have a reference when you watch a film so it's do you guys have a lot of people come visit here or how does this, this space work you know I, I would not we, we we reserve this space for special people like yourself um, so it's not something that's open to the public you know we try and use it. Um, for events like this, we're very proud of it. And I think it's used mostly for our crew. 
uh, the crew that is currently working on the film, for them to come down here and to be inspired by what they see for when they go back to their jobs on Avatar. Last thing I was going to say, does James use Titanic, The Abyss, you know, uh, other films to, to use references, to use like, hey, but the way we did it on this, are we going to do some of that on this? Does that ever happen? You know, I, I think what Jim does is he learns from every one of his movies. But he, he does it uh, more from a story standpoint than a technology standpoint. And he looks back and goes, what worked in that? Jim, Jim engineers his films from a story standpoint. And he uses his past experiences to define his future experiences. Then he throws out the challenge of technology. And what's great about Jim is he can stand there and throw out the challenge, but he can then also speak to, on a cursory level, what it's gonna to take to overcome the challenge. And that really helps people who know the details, who can engineer it from the ground up, get their work done. Is there gonna be something else after Avatar? I hope so. <laughs> no, look, there, there, not only is there something hopefully after Avatar, but there's stuff that we want to go back to. We'd like to go back to Alita Battle Angel. We've been developing Fantastic Voyage. We would love to tell that story. Um, you know, Avatar is just one section of the Lightstorm verse. You know, back to the this, this studio space, I love seeing the scale of, of everything, because then it's like, put, I didn't know how big she was. I didn't know how big they were and the robot and everything. So it's cool to see, it should be a museum. Well, you know, we, we forget when we make a movie and we're shooting um, an avatar or a Navi, we are shooting it as a nine foot tall camera person. We're shooting it from their perspective. So it's only when you walk in and you see Neytiri, you see Jake, do you realize the scale and you're reminded of that. Always a pleasure to talk to you. You're, thank you very you're, much. You're one of the walking, talking legends. I don't, know, I don't know about that, but sure. thank you. And thank you for letting me park your Anytime. All right. All right. Be well. <laughs>